record play. Mm -hmm. All right, please stand by to the play to and your people. I think someone turned off the sound over on your side. Yeah. yeah. We on? Yes, right now. Now you're on. Okay. Okay. Do I need to click something? Jay, can you click on God? Jay. Oh, over there, yeah. Okay, that could have, sorry, that might have been me, but I saw, I didn't hear any of that before, but now I hear you now, so everything, I'm good now, thank you, sorry. And Hunter's really um, dropped, I'm yeah. All right, this meeting is called pursuant to the provisions of the Open Public Meetings Act. Both adequate and electronic notice of this meeting has been provided by way of publication in the Huntington County Democrat and Korea News newspapers on, on or about February 1st, 2024 and January 30th, 2024. In addition, notice of the meeting was posted at the Borough of Flemington Municipal Building located at 38 Park Avenue and any handicapped accessible entrances there too. Posted on the municipal website, provided to the municipal clerk, and distributed to all persons of any requesting copies of the same. This meeting is being recorded with both audio and video and may be rebroadcast. This meeting is a judicial proceeding. Any questions or comments must be limited to the issues that are relevant to what the board may legally consider in reaching a decision, and the quorum appropriate to a judicial hearing must be maintained at all times. Right, finally, can we do the roll call, please? Mayor Carroll here. Councilman, here. Mr. Campion, here. Mr. Hill, here. Mr. Tashina, here. Mr. Cook, here. Ms. Waitsman, here. Mr. Smino, here. Ms. Swingle, here. Mr. Mario, here. Mr. Echo is recused. Um, excuse me. Uh, Mr. Show. Here, here. Guess we're here. <laughs> here. Um, Mr. Hill, uh, Mr. Ian Hill, excuse me, for Mr. Clarico. Here. Mr. Troutman. Here. And I don't see Ms. McManus. Yes. Oh, she thought that she was calling her. She was going to see it. Yeah. Yes. She's getting on. Where we fix we. Echo. Do we need to just yeah. 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 Now I have a theory. Hold on. Try having somebody talk. Jim? Jim, say something. Jim Hill. Okay. Yes. I can say yeah. something. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> the, the speaker on the TV, you know, the, that computer was on, so it was coming through there as well as through the sound system. And so what you learned, this is what you learned four years into uh, Zoom oh. teaching. Yes, that's um, all right, so item one on the agenda is public comments. This is for items not currently on the agenda. Anybody in the public, either in person or online, any comments they wish to raise tonight? Seeing none, we'll move on to item two, my comments. Uh, the only thing I just wanted to let the uh, planning board know is that um, Along with the item number seven, the review of the Liberty Village Phase One Redevelopment Plan, uh, uh, Beth has been assigned the task of doing the consistency review. So she was looking on that as well. And that's it. Thank you. 
Okay. Um, item three, council comments, please. Uh, I have no comments, and I think going forward, uh, council comments should probably be removed. Um, the idea is that I am a member of the board as opposed to a liaison. Okay. And as a member of the board, I'm a contributor and I'm a participant. Mm -hmm. But my role is more focused on going back to the other elected officials and advising them of what is here. But I would highly encourage any of them to attend our meetings. They, they are robust, they are fun, and uh, they are productive. Okay. Well, so if that's so we attend the meeting, can we make a report for the rest of the board since it's yeah. more hard to be at both meetings all the time? If, if you want, want to, yes. But um, I'm happy to slow in with other members of the council and the council president as well as the mayor. Um, it's making sure that as a council person, I'm reporting to them what's going on in here as opposed to the council reporting to the planning board. Wow. That's sort of not very sharing, but uh, well, I share. I mean, sometimes, yes, yeah. sometimes. How many times did well, it's always good to know when things that may affect the planning board or Senate council, so you're not surprised when you come to a meeting. And usually, I mean, they're not long to say council spoke about X, and you're going to be seeing this application. I, I mean, it's it's just transparency, that's all, guys. But I, I do certainly do them into a meeting and make a report to the rest of the planning board. I was just going to, I was just going to raise the concern that having, we've always had the council member say something in terms of um, just what legislatively is considered by council, um, which is distinct from the role that the mayor does um, in terms of, in terms of meeting. And I, I, I if, if the council member doesn't want to give a report, I mean, that's certainly her prerogative, but it's just, I'm just a little disappointed. That's fine. Okay. And um, to Mr. Uh, Cook's point, if anybody does want to make a report on that, just give us a heads up so that we can have time for it if there's other things we want to complete. Thank you. All right, HPC comments, item four. Dennis, you have anything for us from HPC today? I, we didn't have a meeting uh, since the last planning board meeting, but I will just remind everyone that we are having the historic house tour on Saturday, June 1st from 11 to 5. Definitely looking for volunteers. So if anyone's interested, let me know. Or if you want to recommend someone else to volunteer, let me know. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Um, just before we move to item five, um, I, can I just say uh, since we came in a member of the public, if we'll do it formally later, item 11, but item 11 will not be being heard today at the request of the applicant that's been on the table. Oh, sorry, public hearing for Central Station. No, not tonight. Okay. Well, I wanted to carry um, next week. Now it's good week. Yeah. Well, if we're well, we're going to carry it without further notice, which is the one that's going to be carried too. Right. Um, so, you know, everyone can know, but we can just readjust it a little bit and actually do that at your own request when we do it. Right. Yeah, in, in light of the board's agenda this evening, I'm sorry, Steve Gruenberg, on behalf of the applicant, um, it appears that you might have some discussion tonight that will uh, be a little bit lengthy. So, um, we request that our public hearing be continued to be. First April meeting, Yay! and um, that that be carried without further notice. Uh, uh, it's not the first of it. You mean the first meeting in April? So the April ninth meeting that will be carried to them with no further notice required. April ninth. Thank you. 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 Thank Nothing huge to report except that it is moving forward. Right. So we don't have to. Hopefully, I will have some more definitive uh, updates for next week. Right. Okay. Um, engineer Hill. Is that correct? Yeah. Walter Hill. 
Yes, that's uh, that's accurate. That's the the item I'd like to address tonight, when the time comes. Thank you. And we are um, keeping. Oh, um, okay, thank you. Um, item six is the approval of minutes from the February twenty seventh, twenty twenty four regular meeting. Those were distributed to all. Does anybody have any comments on those? No, I make a motion to approve. Seconds. Mr. Cook. Yes. <clears throat> Mayor Carroll? Yes. Mr. Kenton? Yes. Ethan? Yes. Mr. Hill? Jim? Jim? Mr. Jim Hill. Jim Hill. <laughs> yes. Jim? Are you there? He is not moving. He is moving. Talking to me? Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm getting reverberation, so if uh, it didn't just yell at me. We have a vote for the minutes from uh, February 27, 2024. Yeah. Do you have a vote, uh, Yolanda, for the. I vote, yeah, I vote yes. Thank you. Mr. Jackson? Yes. Ms. Weitzman? Yes. Mr. Yes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Right, moving on to item seven, ordinance one <coughs> review. This is the Liberty Village phase one redevelopment plan. Um, Madam Chair, did we want to do completeness before heading into this? Do you want to keep the I, items the way that they are? I am aware. I am aware of that, but the reason I've left it as it is is we have Beth McManus until eight o'clock only. So I didn't want to go beyond her clock ended on our discussion that she needs to be involved in the Liberty Village phase one. I think this will be five minutes of that. Um, I, I think Mr. Hill and I have already spoken and I indicated to Ms. McManus something. So I really think this would only take a few minutes. Okay, then we'll take it on that <coughs> for five minutes. And I will talk fast. Then we'll need to have a motion I'll to a motion. change we, the meeting. The meeting. Mm -hmm. There we go. Can all fall on that plan? Mr. Cook? Yes. Mr. Sinina? Yes. Mayor Carroll? Yes. Councilwoman Pissarro? Yes. Mr. Campion? Yes. Yes. Mr. Hill? Yes. Mr. Dashna? Yes. Ms. Weitzman? Yes. All right. So then we will move to the previously uh, listed item 10 completeness. Welcome to the T House LLC application 2021, lot 37, lot 10, 171 Main Street. Hi, Steve Brunenberg on behalf of the applicant. If people recall, I appeared before the board at the last meeting and we deferred completeness to this evening in order for us to address some additional items and just prepare those correspondence. And the board um, allowed us to notice at our own risk for the March uh, 26 meeting. And uh, Mr. Clerico issued updated correspondence. I had a brief conversation with Mr. Hill ahead of time and provided some information to Ms. McManus this afternoon. I think we're okay, and correct me if I'm wrong, with the waivers being granted for completeness purposes only and that the application be deemed complete. Um, our engineer has been in contact with Mr. Clerico with respect to the leaps and bounds for the right of way, which I think is the only survey issue that was an issue that they're resolving um so that's why i thought this would only take five minutes if everybody is okay with that we would ask that you grant the waivers i set forth in mr uh clerico's correspondence and the application complete this evening there are there are five checklist items that are related to the survey in the net lot area versus gross lot area that are technically incomplete unless the board decides to grant a temporary waiver from them that's the right. point you know, and there's there's other waivers. You know, this is not like this was the only waiver they're requesting. Um, but Bob didn't have a problem if the board he, he would support the decision by the board to give a temporary waiver to allow the yeah. termination of completion. Yeah, there were quite a lot of waivers on, on the Mr. Clerical report. So I want to just say, and I feel about that, but 
trying to get away from too many waivers and moving things forward because yeah, I mean, it's only about these five items. Um, but as far as these five items go, yeah, I, I can indicate to you that most of those items are, are dealing with the needs and bounds for the right of way, and it's a, a technical um, whether we supply, supply deeds and easements and restrictions. Well, we supplied it, but there was an indication that's incomplete because the needs and bounds isn't on the plans. So those issues can be resolved. As to as to lighting, um, we are only open from uh, we are only served from eleven to three p.m. So I had addressed that with Ms. McManus. Um, with respect to uh, the signage, we're going to use the existing sign. So uh, I, I really think that. Excuse you know, me, Karen. I cannot hear Mr. Groomer. Well, I was a young boy. Um, so, based upon what I think we've submitted, um, I think the board can uh, deem this application complete and we can address any of those issues during the public hearing. Mr. Clarico indicated in his letter to, to um, the board that he was okay with all of the waivers except for the ones that he was referring to Ms. McManus. So I don't have a problem supporting Mr. Clarico's suggestion. He varies as a known quantity. He's been in business in this borough for 20 years. Um, you know, they have now invested in their own property instead of being a renter. So, you know, I support what Mr. Clarico said. and. Refers to Ms. McManus, and she's okay as well. And this isn't like some huge new brick new subdivisions. We're, we're putting a walk in freezer over impervious surfaces. Right. Existing yeah. impervious surfaces. Beth, are you okay with what, you know, with the waiver on? Yeah, there were two waivers that had been deferred to me. One was in regard to landscaping. The other was in regard to lighting. I'm comfortable with the landscaping waiver uh, for certain. At the at the last, I think it was the last planning board meeting, I had expressed concern about the lighting on the property and suggested that that waiver might be, uh, they might not be comfortable with that waiver. I will say that since then, uh, I have uh, better understood the T Berry's operating hours, at, and I believe they're closing hours at 3 p.m. And while I don't want to get into the merits of the case, knowing that this is a, a use that is operating during the daytime only does give me comfort uh, that we don't need to see lighting uh, at this time. I will say, of course, the board always has the right to request that additional information should it see fit during the hearing process. But uh, given my better understanding of the proposal, the proposed use at this time, I am comfortable recommending both the lighting and the landscaping waivers at this uh, at this moment. Well, at the last meeting, you only asked to see them on the plan. You didn't ask the plan. Just where they correct. I'm sorry. Well, before, I'll make that as a motion. Okay. I wanted to see if anybody else on the board had thoughts. Um, well, you've, you've we watched this. I can see you've got a discussion now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. We have a motion and a second. Yes. Thank you. Okay, then we can have this. Thank you. Anybody on the board want to have any? Because I, I totally support the mayor's comments about this applicant. Um, this board is trying to move away from granting so many waivers. Um, I think. Um, I just want to be secure that we were going to have everything we need at that point out on the 26th to properly evaluate the application. Understood. Yeah. Aaron? Yeah, who's that? I don't I don't want to slow anything down. I just want to mention, I want to make sure they realize they need to apply to the HPC for that entrance that's being made to the building since it faces the street. That doesn't have to impact what we're voting on now, but I do want to make sure they realize they need to do an application to the HPC. Are they changing? Are you changing? Yeah, they're building them. Well, they're proposing them. I'm, I'm going to look into that. I can't um, concede that we're doing that, but I'll look into that issue. Because of the facing the street, so you're changing the outside and of the building. We'll need one person to talk at a time. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to get it on the record. You know, yeah. understand. 
because it doesn't just face Main Street, that building, it faces the side street. That's why Dennis has made the comment. Okay. I understand the comment. I just can't. Okay. I got to look into it. Sure. <laughs> Well, just in case you do need to, what's the date of the next HPC meeting, Dennis? It's, it's mid month, um, but we could always do it administratively too, Marcia. You know, so it's um, I can I can find it real quick, but it's mid month. It, it's a basically for our next planning board meeting. Yeah, I guess that's week. Yeah, it's the twentieth. It's the twentieth. Okay, thank you. But they concerned about their prepared to work with. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. All right. So, anything else? Is there anything? Just as far as a comment, I understand the uh, the amount of waivers, or you know, when we do get behind when we grant waivers. But mm -hmm. don't forget, this is only waivers to deem the application complete. And anybody on this board at any time, even midst in the middle of the application, can say, you know what, I want to see a lighting plan. That's on the applicant to say. Oh, okay. I'll have to come back because I'm not prepared for this. Is only to wait. It's not to waive it forever. It's to waive it for completeness. Is the application complete? Do we have everything that we need to look at? And like the mayor said, it's not like an not that we would be in favor of an old business versus a new business, but we know what we're getting here. And you know, yes, I'd like to see what light light poles are too. But is it going to make my decision that much? You know, am I going to be able to make a decision by not having it complete today? I don't believe so. So that's how I feel about completeness. It's not to waive it forever. It's to waive it to say, yeah, we have everything we need for this, but we always reserve the right later to ask for something. And I, and I just want to add to what Todd said. You know, we've, we've got a number of very large applications, several of which the councilwoman and I are accused from, that got waivers. I mean, they keep coming back and delaying and waiting and coming back because they really weren't ready because those waivers were very large. And their new construction and their large subdivision. This is an existing historic building uh, with an existing business that we know does lovely landscaping, and they're going to make sure nobody falls and hurts themselves. But it's an existing building. It's not like it's being torn down. It's you know it's being built. So I'm comfortable with Bridge Sue. I am one of the largest vocal people about all the waivers we grant. But that's a, but there's a difference between you know these these new complicated subdivisions versus an existing building that's just not even looking for a use of it, just coming in to, you know, Agreed. take a take a parking space. So all right, with that being said, is that going to come to a vote? Okay. Call the vote and say darling. And the vote, just for purposes of the record, is to <clears throat> uh accept the uh waivers, temporary waivers. Um, and the rest of the uh, to do the application complete with the grant of those waivers out, as outlined in Bob's letter of March 11th. Yeah. Is that right? Probably right. Yeah. Well, but it was the next one. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yes. Mayor yes. Carroll? Yes. Mr. Grill? Yes. Councilwoman Tassara? Yes. Mr. Campion? Yes. Ms. Giffen? Yes. Mr. Hill? Yes. Mr. Nash? Yes. Weinstein? Yes. Yes. I'm sorry, I had a like a triple hook up there at one time. I couldn't really understand anything, so I had to go up from back in. Very good. Okay, thank, thank you. you very much. Sorry. And the public five. hearing is scheduled for March 26th. Yes, and we can do the um, Google advertisement in the paper and we'll do the certified slayer this week. Perfect. Thank Great. you. Thank you all very much. So much. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right, let's get back to the agenda item seven of ordinance 2024-01 review of the Liberty Village phase one redevelopment plan. Um does this need an introduction by you for you to run through it for us? Would that be a good idea? She wants to do it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I have not. You see it? Yeah. No. The only thing that's reported to me were the ordinance and the requiring or resolution. What else did you want? That's all I. I didn't see anything wrong. I sent that. Um, on the sixth, I believe. Yeah. It was, it, it was with the agenda. It was with the agenda for March twelfth. 
It was sent on 3 6 at 11 48. Did they see the plan that was that sent to them? That's, I think, what the issue is. I, I think we got the resolution and the ordinance, but the actual plan for phase one itself never you never got it. No, that's what I'm saying. Um, this is not a rush, um, because. Um, so I, it's not an issue to hold this for another the next few days. Yeah, I mean, the, the pilot agreement was supposed to be introduced last night as an ordinance, but um, their financial planner sent our people a payment schedule that's very detailed and complicated at the last minute. So there was no time for them to review it to make sure all the numbers were right. So we held that off the agenda and the, the the goal is that the plan amendment that Beth is going to discuss tonight, and she still could, yeah. um, is going to is now introduced, but they're all going to be voted for at the same time. So a delay of, you know, if we can do it at the next meeting, they'll, they should match up again um, because we're going to be introducing the pilot possibly at the next meeting. So it's, it's up to the chair and the board. It yeah. didn't make sense if that's here to kind of give an overview so that everybody knows what they're looking and at. Can I ask what the plan? I, mean, I think it's posted. I actually think it's posted on our website. It, it is, is on our website. Where is on the website? We can find it. It's, um, oh, maybe. No, I, think I don't it's know. I mean, Carla was directed to post it, so I don't know where she put it. Hey, here's the mic. Sorry, right. we're just trying to be. I said Carla was directed to post it on the website at least a week ago. I mean, I assume she did. I looked under the Liberty Village section, but someplace else I could find it. Okay, I'll, I will definitely. Yeah, it's on the original yeah. set on the website because I was looking myself today. Could someone? I think it's revised like, it. Yeah, what that word? Could someone please explain so the public understands oh. what that ordinance is that you're redoing? What is it doing? Well, Beth is going to. Re uh, what is that? That's what I was asking Beth, our planner, to just go over. There's an updated redevelopment plan for Liberty Village that has been worked on, and Beth was going to introduce it. There's then there's an ordinance and a resolution that the, the council have asked us to, the governing body have asked us to review as planning, but we have to review it um, before it goes back to them. And that's what we were going to do tonight. But we're finding out that this was not distributed to the board, the whole package. Right? What did you know, the that resolution have, was? That's the only things that I got from the, the clerk. So huh. Wouldn't it be helpful so, if it introduced when it for I, I, I requested it on the, on the 6th after it was supposed to be introduced on the 5th at the budget meeting, and this is what was sent to me. Wouldn't it be meeting. helpful if we allowed Beth to at least introduce it for both members of the public and members of the board who may not be following along with, you know, how this is going to come down the pipe? I mean, she... I think it's fine. Yeah, we think it's fine. And I'm, trying, I'm just trying to figure out how that got screwed up because I know Beth wrote, well, I know Carla wrote to either Beth or the redevelopment attorney and said, there's a watermark that says draft on this. Can I get a clean one to remove it? It was to him. And he wrote back and said, you can just take it off. And she said, okay. And then I did say that. You, um, you got I did get that, but then I maybe, uh, you know, I was waiting until it was introduced. Then I asked Carla for all of the, the items to that were officially introduced. I didn't want to. It just looks like that is before a simple failure to communicate here. So, yeah. Because you did get that from Carla. I, okay. I didn't get that from Carla. No, I did see the emails from. Uh, Beth and um, Jim, Farrell. Jim Farrell. Okay. Yes. All right. So it's simple. It's a simple failure to communicate. So I apologize to everybody on the board that you did not get the plan amendment, and uh, we'll make sure that gets corrected immediately. Beth, you can send that out to everybody, right? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Uh, Eileen, I'll send you the the plan if you want to distribute it for the board. That'd be great. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. I'll send that today. And then you can talk about it tonight. Yeah, I'd like to. I'd be that. happy to. Yeah, I think that would be really useful. Um, apologize to the board that you don't have to have time to read through the actual plan that they propose. But they will, and then that will stimulate your um, review of it when you uh, receive it. So, um, Beth, please. Okay. So the first thing I want to explain is just some of the terminology that's being used. So we're talking about a redevelopment plan and an ordinance, and they go hand in hand, but they are not quite the same thing. So the redevelopment plan is the regulating document, and it's the document that I'm going to describe uh, that dictates how the site shall be developed. There's also an ordinance 
that the council introduced and will adopt. And that ordinance is uh, a very brief ordinance that simply adopts the redevelopment plan as the new regulating document for this area. So to the extent that folks are talking about a redevelopment plan and or an ordinance, they're technically two different documents, but they're very much intertwined and uh, one really, really can't exist without the other. Um, so that's a little bit of terminology. The other thing that I wanted to first start out with is that ordinance uh, does two things. First and foremost, it adopts the redevelopment plan, presuming the council adopts it. The other thing that it does is it repeals the existing redevelopment plan. So the borough had adopted a redevelopment plan just a few years ago that uh, prescribed uh, residential and some other uses on the property uh, with less specificity than we than what we see now. That redevelopment plan will be entirely repealed and replaced with the one I'm about to describe. This new redevelopment plan uh, it addresses most of the existing Liberty Village redevelopment area. And I say most because the Northwest parking area is excluded. If you look at the concept plan, when you look at the concept plan at the back of the, of the document, you'll notice that there's an existing redevelop, uh, excuse me, an existing parking lot that has no uh, redevelopment shown on it. And that is the area that I'm referring to as being excluded. The rest of the site, uh, that's designated as an area in need of redevelopment is subject to the standards and the terms in this plan. And what the plan does principally is it calls for the replacement of the existing Liberty Village Shopping Center with 123 town, excuse me, 123 total units, including 111 townhouses and 12 multifamily affordable special needs units. And so generally speaking, the, uh, the eastern portion of the property, the, the portion east of the railroad or east of Stangle will be developed as a townhouse community, including one major spine road that connects from Route 12 to Church Street. And that area will host most of those 111 townhouses. The area west of the railroad or west of Stangle will include the uh, remaining townhouses, a handful of townhouses, plus an affordable housing component that will be uh, completed as part of two multifamily buildings with six units each. Those affordable units, uh, of which there are 12 units, will be special needs units and will be occupied by veterans, uh, disabled veterans. And the developer will partner with uh, an experienced affordable housing developer who specializes in veterans housing. In addition to those 12 affordable units, there are also seven affordable townhouse units that are in that will be integrated in the, the rest of the townhouse development of the site. Uh, there are, as I said in the beginning, the project principally replaces the Liberty Village development, but there are two buildings that are exceptions uh, two buildings that will remain on the uh, in the area. The first is uh, is the existing uh, two story white Liberty Village uh, office building that faces on Church Street. That building uh, will remain, and that building will be reoccupied, uh, revitalized, consistent with the VAS district standards. The other building that will remain is a single story brick building just to the east of there. Uh, I've heard it referred to internally as the Allies building, Allies being uh, an existing uh, tenant in the space. As I said, it's a single story building. That building will also remain and that too will be subject to the VAS district. So essentially those are two buildings that will be available for commercial development for non-residential use. One of the other major features of the development is a park that will be constructed along Brown Street. That park will be a borough park once it is completed. It's about 7,500 square feet, includes uh, sitting areas uh, as well as play equipment for children. And then of course, uh, no project would be complete these days if it did not include substantial stormwater management areas. And so you'll see uh, on the concept plan, there are substantial areas and it includes, for example, an area behind the Brown Street Park, uh, sort of 
between the park and the rest of the development. It also includes the, uh, the southwest parking area. It, you'll note that that is identified as an area for flood compensation or flood storage compensation. And then there are a variety of small or modest sized stormwater uh, detention basins or retention basins throughout the project. I also want to note on the Brown Street Park that one of the one of the nice features about that park is that there will be access to the park both from Brown Street as well as from the development itself. There's a walkway that will connect the development to the park. One of the uh, I would say the the most important features of the regulatory aspects of the plan is the requirement that the developer comply with the concept plan located at the end of the redevelopment plan. So that concept plan that I had cited earlier, I believe is exhibit uh, A, that concept plan depicts building footprints, the park, stormwater management areas, access locations, both in terms of that spine road that will connect uh, church to uh, route 12. It also uh, depicts how the, portion of the development uh, west of the railroad will connect to Stangle. That concept plan must, uh, or I, sh I should say the site plan that they eventually file with this planning board must be consistent with that concept plan. That is a fundamental requirement in order for them to proceed with development of the property. Additionally, there are uh, architectural renderings included in the plan that have the same requirement in the sense that their site plan, their, the architectural plans that they will submit to you must be consistent with those renderings. And they include uh, renderings for the townhouses. And while I don't uh, have renderings included for the multifamily, the affordable units, um, the redevelopment plan does require that those units be consistent, the architecture of of those units be consistent with the architecture of the townhouses for which renderings are provided. Additionally, as I mentioned with the Brown Street Park, there are also concept plans included in, in the redevelopment plan that state that the developer must submit a site plan that is that has a, a Brown Street Park plan that is consistent with the renderings included in the redevelopment plan. The exception to that is the play equipment. The developer is not required to propose the exact same play equipment, but the, the layout of the plan and other features of the park plan uh, must be provided in the eventual site plan application. There are a variety of other standards throughout the plan. It includes things uh, such as the, uh, the typical bulk standards that we would expect to see. It also requires street trees as well as sidewalks throughout the project. Um, and I will say there is a, a railroad crossing that is uh, set forth uh, providing access from east and west on other, either side of the railroad, uh, as you would expect given the existing uh, the existing crossing. Uh, and so that is that is carried forward. It also the plan also recognizes that there's a chance that that railroad crossing may change. And so it does grant permission for the concept plan to change in order to reflect uh, any change to that crossing location, uh, as well as any changes that may occur. Uh, along uh, Church Street for uh, for road realignment that may or may not occur in the future. So while there are some limited exceptions to compliance with the concept plan, the uh, I would say the the most important feature of this redevelopment plan is a requirement that the site plan comply with the concept plan, that the site plan comply with the architectural renderings, and uh, of course that they uh, that they not exceed the density and provide permitted uses as set forth in the redevelopment plan. And so that is a very quick overview of the redevelopment plan. I'm, I'm happy to go into as much detail as the board would like, uh, but I didn't want to get too far in the weeds given that folks haven't had a chance to review it. So if the area in the west of the existing parking lot that I think has the flood plain issues, is that still technically an area needed redevelopment? after we declared it as such, or does that have to be declared put it out of the redevelopment plan? I think I heard your question as asking if those areas uh, to the West will remain as an area in need of redevelopment. The answer is yes, uh, regardless of whether it's the parking lot that is not subject to this plan or the uh, the flood storage area that is, they will remain as part of the area in need of redevelopment unless the borough council uh, 
uh, repeals uh, the designation from those specific areas. I just need to, I, I hate to, I hate to correct you on anything, Beth, because you're always so good, but that stormwater basin on the furthest westernmost part is part of the permit that DEP is issuing this project. It stays with this project. It will never go away, according oh. to the so I'm sorry, I agree. I wasn't, it, maybe I didn't hear the question. I didn't mean to suggest otherwise. Yeah. Maybe, if I can, I think maybe the question is the original redevelopment area, the, this current plan that we have to consider is phase one of two, right? So the original redevelopment area covered area that isn't included in this phase one plan, am I correct? Yes. Yeah, there are so that parking lot that is uh, not the flood compensation area is not subject to this redevelopment plan. That would presumably be part of a uh, a phase two development. But I will say that uh, there's no uh, existing zoning or redevelopment plan uh, plan standards that would apply to that parking lot. That would be subject to future borough discussion and negotiation. Right, but currently it's under the old redevelopment plan. No, no, the redevelop the old redevelopment plan is going to be repealed, so those standards will no longer be in place. Right, but to Todd's point, the areas that we are not covering in phase one that were covered on the original redevelopment area, well, there are they all, they they are. Are they repealed by this or are they going to be repealed in place? Two? Oh, I think there's a distinction. The redevelopment plan, the previous redevelopment plan is going to be repealed. The designation is a separate action and that will remain in place. Okay. So that we could expect a redevelopment plan in the future on the property that we don't have a redevelopment plan for, uh, or, or at a bare minimum, a fix of the parking lot over there or something. Correct. I would say that would be a phase two, uh, a phase two of sorts uh, discussion. Now, just to make sure I'm understanding then, obviously if the, the standing plan is repealed in its entirety, this plan is adopted. That's the, that's the approach that's being taken. The um, areas that have been deemed to need a redevelopment that are not covered by this phase one plan, they would be areas of the, the the designation hasn't changed. There's still areas in need, um, but they will then have no underlying, they will not have any plan adopted until such point that council negotiates with the developer or designates a different developer, whoever, whatever council does for that other part of it. Right? And, the, and the complicated thing for the redeveloper is that the stormwater rules have changed such that um, he couldn't build what he was approved for because he didn't, there was no way for him to do the stormwater storage. So yep. he would have to design some something very different. I'm with you. I, I I was always I always had concerns about the housing that was closer to the floodplain. So I'm not right. There's no objection. Or, he, or yeah. he's gonna have to find some way to get the DP permit. Ten acres of dirt coming there. Whatever. It is. Right. right. Exactly. Okay. Right. Okay. No. okay. I but just I just want to make sure, I just want to make sure because. Exactly. Right. So we were going to have, but there will be some small subset of parcels that have been deemed an area in need that will then, once presuming this all goes through, that will not have an underlying, will not have any zoning attached. That is correct. It's other than what's in the master plan is a suggestion. Um, but, but the buy right zoning gets superseded by the yes, redevelopment, right? right? So, yes. I, so, yeah. so I, I'm sorry, folks. The, the redevelopment plan will be repealed. But the underlying zoning will remain in place. Oh, that's right. Yeah, right. That, that was the town yes. house. Right. Right. So theoretically, I'm just, I'm just gonna. Just, so theoretically, he's never gonna get permits from DEP. I understand that. But theoretically, <laughs> and I want a pony. The um, the underlying zoning of the area in need. Yes. Um, the underlying. <laughs> Zoning that correct in that area is VAS, right? That's the correct. The, okay, so so absent any particular absent those parcels that are not part of phase one, it'll just revert to VAS until at some point in the future, perhaps the governing body decides to come up with some other planning and consult with the developer. Yada yada yada. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Okay. Just that was my question, but there is no time limit on this order. At council's request, declared a parcel in area in need of redevelopment. Said parcel is now out of that redevelopment plan, but it's still an area in need of redevelopment, and it still can have a plan in the future. We're not going to have to redeclare it an area in need of redevelopment in the future because that rides forever, correct? That is correct. Yes, that is correct. However, at some point, if he doesn't take action to fix anything, the borough council can remove his status as the redeveloper for that. That is the hammer to get James Johnson paid or cleaned up. Okay, so I, I would say that it's, it, I think I want to thank Beth for the introduction. I would feel better if we could have some time to look at it and then, right? And then, because we need to have a public hearing, right? On, or was it just not as well? Yeah, this is our consistency. Yeah, this is our consistency. Sorry, Lois. This is our consistency with the master plan. Right. The council That's will the have the public hearing. Right. So, so I mean, not for um, the, it, so we hopefully we'll get the plan for the next whatever day, right? right. Um, we'll have a chance to look at it. We'll have it. We'll have an opportunity at the twenty sixth meeting, and that lines up with what um, it, it, like I council said, wants. Yeah, I mean, hopefully we'll be able to, to introduce the pilot on the twenty sixth, so that hearing wouldn't be for another couple weeks anyway. So we're not we're adopting the whole package. The 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 this ordinance for the. The plan, the ordinance for the pilot, and the contract, which is a resolution with the redeveloper, um, the agreement, they are all going the same night. So yeah, you're always one night before us. Yes. You yes. introduce the pilot March 25th. We have our consistency review March 26th. You then have your council meeting yeah. on the 8th, and that's when you can do everything because we've already reported back on the 26th. April. Yeah, but I don't think I think we're going to probably go for the last meeting in April because there's still a couple of minor sticking points with um, the contract, which uh, is over on the Spangle Road area. So um, and he's just checking with the DEP about some waivers and things like that. So, you know, I mean, I'd rather get it right and get it fast. And um, it has taken us a long time to get a plan that I just want to say I think that the, the whole council and and definitely Beth is happier with than the last plan. So it's taken us a long time to get to finish, like literally to get to see finishes, to agree to finishes. I mean, that's like it was very important about you know what this was going to look like for the public that it was going to you know basically fit in more as a as a new as a new style of, of a classic town. So. Um, so I'd rather have the I'd really rather have the planning board take their time reading it for the next two weeks than just push this thing through. I really would really, really, you know, and I and I, I am just all so I got a big star on calling up with Carla and make sure this thing's up posted. Just want the public to see it before well, the public yeah, hearing. That's what I'm saying. That that would be yeah. Absolutely. And not not even you know, posting it on a Friday and having a hearing on a Monday night. I mean, I want the public to have the documents for at least a week before the, the there's public hearings. Absolutely. And thank you, Beth, for your introduction of it, because I think that's really going to help the board. You've got the introduction, then when you get the thing, you, the actual plan, you can look, read it with Beth words in mind, and then come, we have a full um, frank discussion at the next meeting about what we want to put forward to council. And where can the public see it? I'm, I'm going to make sure it's posted on the website, Lois, but, you know, if you don't can have access to it. a copy to the Flemington Public Library? We could do that. You can send a copy to the library. Yeah. The library and liaison just said, Mr. Really, can I do all of it? <laughs> I really like that. Yeah. So we'll do okay. that. We will do that. Perfect. All right. So thank you for that. Um, that's all we can really talk about on that item for tonight. So we'll move on to item eight, resolution 202406, Less Wellness LLC. From the application 2306, block 44, lot seven. Um, we need to, I think we need to promote somebody, do we? Yes, um, the attorney, uh, Larry Gatola, I just, you just did promoted it? him to his parents. All right, so how do we need to, how do we introduce this car? Is it, can you explain why we're doing this? I again? can, I can, and, and I'm not going to, you know, 
interfere with Larry's argument, but basically what we're here for tonight is the applicant is asking for a revision to one of the conditions of the resolution. And I'll let him go through which one that is. Um, the applicant did agree to notice for this meeting tonight out of an abundance of caution. Um, the standard is if it is a condition that is a material condition that may have affected the board's decision on the uh, approval of the application, then notice is required. Um, so instead of making that determination and running the risk of having an issue, the applicant did agree to notice. Um, Eileen, you have received copies of all the publications yes. and notices. Um, With the 200 foot list? Correct, mm -hmm. correct. Um, as well as the publication in the newspaper. Um, so the applicant's attorney is here tonight. He'll explain what revisions they're asking for. And uh, then the board, um, I would ask that they ask any questions that they may have, uh, both of the board's professionals as well as of the applicant um, and anybody the applicant may have brought with them and uh, then deliberate. I, I would like to hear from everybody, um, even if it's just to say that you agree with everyone else that's spoken. Um, but I think it's important that we do that. And uh, then you can make a vote on whether or not to amend that condition of the resolution. And the people that are eligible to vote are listed on the agenda. Thank you. Okay, so is it Mr. Catullo? Catullo? Yes, hi, Larry Catullo, O'Toole Scribo, appearing on behalf of the applicant, Bless Wellness LLC. Yeah. Would you like to introduce why you've come before us today, please? Yes, certainly. So, uh, as you will recall, Bless was before the board on November 27th, 2023, um, regarding its proposed uh, cannabis dispensary for uh, 313 U.S. Route 22 in Flemington and 315 U.S. Route 202. Um, the board held a public hearing and voted to grant conditional use approval uh, and a minor site plan approval and bulk variance approvals for signage. The vote occurred that night. Um, the board uh, also ran through some conditions uh, that were to go into the resolution. And um, after the board voted and in the coming weeks, a proposed resolution was circulated to the applicant, uh, myself, the board's professionals and probably the board members as well too. Um, and uh, in that time, the applicant uh, came up with um, conditions it thought ought to be uh, amended. And principally, uh, those of you who were here and voted on the application, there was considerable discussion at the very end of the application, not really dealing with the conditional use approval or the uh, minor site plan, but really dealing uh, just with this condition at the end of the meeting. Um, part of the prop, as you recall from the hearing, part, a very small part of the property uh, where the Pearl Vision building is located is located in Raritan Township. The portion of the site where the cannabis dispensary is uh, to be proposed at the former Pizza Hut 25 Burgers building is fully in uh, Flemington and the last building, the Burger King is also fully within Burger King. So that's the three, three um, buildings on the site. So there was considerable discussion whether how to craft a condition regarding, um, regarding uh, any uh, approvals that might be needed from Raritan. Um, the applicant's position was that the condition should fall within a um, condition pertaining to outside agency approvals and um, anything that was needed from from Raritan Township would would uh, would be would fall within that condition. Um, the, the language that we proposed to um, the board attorney was that the applicant would comply with all applicable borough, county and state statutes, ordinances, regulations, including without limitation, obtaining all approvals and or permits. Um, the board, on the other hand, went with the condition that stated affirmatively that the applicant was required to obtain a letter of no interest or some type of approval from the Raritan Zoning Board or the Raritan Zoning Board of Adjustment 
Um, so we are here tonight to request, and that was the condition that was in the draft resolution that we got, as um, you know. So we are here tonight to ask the board to go back, take another look at that, and go to the more um, – more to to the to the condition that we had proposed which was that that any 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 anything needed from raritan would fall within a condition pertaining to uh outside agency approvals from the borough the county the state um or any other approvals that are needed so that's <clears throat> um the request tonight um we're doing so because we're making this request principally because if we if we are affirmatively required by the condition to go to Raritan, um, we believe that the project won't proceed. Uh, we, we do not, Raritan will not give us a letter of no interest. And we do not uh, at, 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 uh, at this time um, believe it's, you know, before we get further down with um, the development process and the resolution compliance process to, to have to go to Raritan for any other type of approval. So we would, like this to go back to the earlier um or to our proposed condition that this falls within the all other outside approvals um type of condition so that's our request we do not uh we do not believe it's um material or um significant it's something that was discussed at the very end of the um at the very end of the the presentation that we made but as uh Ms. Kaczynski said, we have noticed, uh, given public notice to all property owners of 200 feet, and we have published a notice in the newspaper regarding our request um, out of uh, an abundance of caution um, in case there was a difference of opinion on that issue. So that's our request, and uh, I'm happy to answer any questions regarding it and, and uh, keep the process moving forward. Agency, all outside agency approval how is that different than, I mean, I know like not to go to the zoning board in Raritan Township is one thing, but does that mean you have to get it from the Raritan Township Committee? I mean, what does that mean? Um, could you say that one more time, Mayor? I don't understand what that means when you said you want to fall under <laughs> getting all other outside agency approvals that they would fall into that. So, how would you how would you achieve getting rare in townships approval? I mean, it, would, it would be it would be the same it would be a, the same way, but things change quickly in in cannabis. It's possible that it, that Raritan's ordinance changes change in the future. It's possible they stay the same, but um, if but um, if there's an affirmative obligation for less to go to Raritan, then that's something we would need to do. Um, we believe, and if that's the way the condition is written, we believe we would be firmly obligated to do it. If something changes in the future, um, where Raritan changes its ordinances, and the condition was as we have proposed it, where outside agency, where this this fell into other outside agency approvals and their ordinances change, we wouldn't need to go to to Raritan. That's the that's the way we're looking at it, and um, that's why we would we believe um the condition should uh be amended so let me just clarify i had a similar question to the man that your test your statement seemed to suggest that if the wording was left as it was you'd have to go to raritan for the letter but if we change the word into what you requested you wouldn't have to do that so that's a clarification i'd like you to confirm or deny whether that's the way you see it but then also you seem to be suggesting that if we change the word in, if if Raritan changed their ordinance, you then won't need to go to them. But do you know something we don't about them changing their ordinance? We don't, we don't know anything that you don't know. It's think like I said at the outset, things change can can change quickly in cannabis. Some of these cannabis ordinances were adopted in a very short period of time to permit the use. Uh, it's possible those things change um, could change in, in the future. Why, why can you just clarify for me whether you think you're saying that with the word in the, as we put it it's very clear you have to go to Raritan to get this letter of no interest 
But your 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 statement seems to suggest that if we take it out, you feel you won't have to go to Raritan for that letter of interest. Is that correct? What you is that what you're saying? It's our understanding we still need to go to Raritan either way, except if, if something changes in the future with their ordinances, then then we would not need to go to Raritan if if, if and right now you have to go, you know you have to go to Raritan for this letter of interest, right? Yes. Right now we need we know we need to go to Raritan. So unless you're thinking of sitting on this and not doing anything until that ordinance change happens in Raritan. What difference would it make if we change the language in our in our statement in in our resolution? Sorry. Well, we we don't want to we don't want to sit and do nothing uh, for the time being. We believe that if the the language changed to a um, to a uh, to a more general provision that where the Raritan uh, approval is subsumed within all other outside agency approvals then that would give the applicant some comfort to move forward uh, with the proposed development, move forward with resolution compliance, um, and then deal with um, Raritan further down the road. Um, if that condition was to stay the same and affirmatively obligate us to go to Raritan, then um, the applicant uh, really um, you, it will have to make some tough decisions if it would move forward with the with the proposed development at this point, because as it stands now, um, Raritan does not permit cannabis uses, and uh, and 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 it really the applicant would have a difficult time uh, moving forward with the project um, the way the condition is currently written. Well, it's not just the way the condition is written; it's the way that. Requirement is right now, but I know Jeff wanted to. Yeah, I have, a, I have a question. I have a question for Carol. Okay, so um, and I, I want to. We had some of this discussion at the time of the of the application, but um, you could refresh my memory, please. Um, when we've had it happens from time to time where the, the majority of an application is within the borough, and there's a small little corner like what we're talking about here that is outside of the borough. In the past, what has the board done in terms of resolution conditions for outs for, for I mean it's always Raritan, for Raritan to sign off on or letter of no interest or is is there is there something that we've done in the past? Is there something that the state law requires? What does the municipal land use law uh, let tell us in situations like this? Does the as the applicant is proposing, does the um, any outside all agency approval cover the fact that, as the applicant's attorney has made very clear, and we talked about it at the time of the hearing, this is not a permitted use in rarity, even though the totality of the building, all of the parking, and all the improvements are in the borough. I think we all that was on the record. We all agreed to that, but but the lease area for this building, the, the envelope, and the, you know all of that. Is has this little piece of it that's in rarity. So what's I'm asking our board's attorney, what's the law? What have we done before? Like what language have we used in other resolutions for these kinds of cases where we've got this jurisdictional question? All right, so that was a mouthful. Sorry. It's okay. I'll try to take one at a time. And you know, I, I do want to say that Mr. Patel is in, and his clients are in a very difficult situation right now. Um to me, there's logic and there's statute, the MOU. And unfortunately, this board, as is Raritan Township, is governed by the statutory provisions of the MOUL. I don't personally recall in my tenure here that we have ever asked Raritan for a letter of no interest or an approval. I've definitely been involved in the converse before this board, where they've come before us and said, there's this little tiny sliver. Do you guys care? And this board has taken a look at it and issued a resolution or issued a letter saying, you know what, we defer to you. We're okay, you don't have to come before us. But the statute says that when a piece of property is located in two towns, both towns must review that application. So it's not so much that cannabis is prohibited in Raritan. It's that Raritan will not issue a letter of no interest or an approval with regard to the portion of the property in its town. Now, that may change if their ordinances change and they may be more willing down the road to do that, but they would still have to go get that letter of no interest or approval because it's what the statute requires. It doesn't say if the use is permitted in that other town, 
that they can circumvent that approval. So that's where we are personally. And I think that Bob and Beth, and I don't know if Beth is still on, um, you know, had indicated that if this condition was written generally and we were going through resolution compliance, the issue would still come up. Can I, can I just add, I, mean, I had a conversation with the mayor of Bergen Township about this site. <clears throat> um, their position is that this is an illegal use in the, in the township, not, not prohibited, but legal for however they want to term it. Um, the, the committee seems to be split on the topic of cannabis and plumbing well, to borough. Some of them truly don't care if they have it. Some of them care very much if it's on their border, but they are, I don't know, I don't know what the consensus is. Like, I don't know where their majority is. I just know they all Sorry, want us for rare. Them, rare. I don't know where, I don't know what their majority feels. I just know that they don't all agree on the topic of cannabis. What was indicated to me by the mayor was that if the applicant submitted a letter to, directly to the township committee, he would have to, in good conscience, bring it to the entire township committee for consideration. So, um, you know, I, I asked him about options like fencing off the portion that's in Raritan Township, putting a massive tree in the portion of Raritan Township, um, you know, blocking it off, whatever, and he would not commit to any of those things, uh, but deferred to the majority of the township committee. Um, I just, I just have a question for the attorney. I, I heard that you actually sent, a, the applicant actually sent a letter to Raritan Township before you ever even came to the planning board and you never heard from them. Is that true? Two, two things happened. We 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 made a request to the planning board. Not, I'm sorry, we made a request to Raritan as to how this site had been handled in in the past, um, and we didn't get any any uh, response to them before we came to the planning board. Um, subsequent to your this planning board voting to approve, we sent another letter to Raritan asking them to to give us a letter of no interest, and they said no. Raritan said no. You actually heard from them at, at that point. Yes, we heard from them late December, early early January. After uh, after our hearing. After after this hearing, after the vote, after the vote to approve. You never heard from them when you first wrote to them. They they were dark, but after you went through the whole planning board hearing, then they said no. Yes. So, so yeah, to, to that effect, we, we reached out to them in, in writing and we asked them for input on this site and we did not hear back. I just want to point out to the plan we're going to change the mayor's stuff. So I think there's a different philosophy between the mayor that was there last year um, and the mayor that's there this year. And so, I mean, if the condition bent about Kara would be that they still have to get something from the township, but they can apply directly to the township committee and let them take it up there. It actually said that before. Mm -hmm. The actual, it said, the applicant shall provide the board with a letter of no interest or approval from the township of Raritan or its zoning board of adjustment. So we had both options there. Again, understanding that it's a difficult situation, that there's a difference between logic and statute, and that we've done been involved in a similar situation on the receipt. Is there any legal way for them to eliminate that little tiny piece from the site plan to make that their site comply and only be in Flemington? The only thing I know of is the site. So the landlord can't rewrite the terms of the lease with meets and bounds and descriptions and a survey? The way that the statute is written is that the parcel that is the subject of the application. So the parcel goes all the way to Burger King. So the parcel is the parcel is the parcel. It's one lot with the three buildings. With the condos, right? Okay. And if I, if I could could jump in um, on a couple of other things that had come up in this conversation. Um, first of all, the site plan was approved by both. Flemington and Raritan long ago. This is an approved site plan. We only, Bless only came into for a minor subdivision approval, limited to a very small part of the site as we described. 
um, much like Burger King did when they came in to get a minor site plan to allow Burger King on the very small portion of the site that they have. The Burger King approval did not contain any condition regarding Raritan um, approval, nothing affirmative requiring you to go to the zoning board or to go to uh, the town committee for a letter of no interest in, in um, nothing else contemplating any, anything with regard to, to Raritan. So um, I hope that answers your question as to, to how um, this has been handled in the past by, uh, yes, by this planning board. The reason why I asked the question, let me just put this out on the record because Kara wants all of this on the record, is that when we heard the application for another building on the single parcel, okay, um, that um, for the bank, PNC Bank to be the Burger King, and we had a long hearing on that because there was traffic and signage and some more signage and drive through windows and, and all change, sorts of and a, change in use. and a change in use and all that other good stuff. If you look at the resolution for that, I do not believe that we required Raritan at all because the totality of the project area was in the borough, right? Even though the parcel, right, straddles right, all of Pearl <laughs> is, in, is in the township, all of Burger King is in the borough and Almost all of this building, well, all of this building and almost all of the parking are in the borough, but there's a little cheese. So, we at the time we did not for Burger King require, I don't think we did, I, I'm almost certain because I don't remember the conversation us getting to any of this. I think it was just an ending all and outside was the kind of the boilerplate that we use in there. And I mean, I don't think it solves the applicant's problem. I still think the NLUL is going to require them to get something from them because it's. I mean, as Carol laid it out, I think the state law is going to supersede whatever is going on. And I mean, I personally, I don't have a problem changing the language and going with what the applicant says, because I don't think at the end of the day, it's going to make a difference to them. We raised an issue towards the end of the hearing because I was worried that Raritan was going to throw the whole thing out after we spent one time on the application because of this little piece of property. And it sounds like they may or may not, but I, I personally don't care. My, my decision on, on hearing would not have been impacted if with this res with this condition being as the applicant suggested or as we put in our draft form. I don't. I mean, I'm fine. I still think he's got a problem. Is is what? I, but that's but that wouldn't change. Why does my thing have a problem? problem? Because it's well, not cannabis. It's a drug of choice. <laughs> hey, I'm not. I'm not. I'm you know. I'm I'm on I'm on caffeine. So you know, for me, a Starbucks could be. But so it's. But I, I think that this is, I, the, the, I think that the, the issue in front of us, I think that to, to kind of, to bring it in, like, would those of us who are listed here, right, would we have felt, do, was this condition that was, that Tara put into her draft, would that have changed how we would have voted on the application? And for me, my, my feeling on the application personally was not one or the other. I was, I felt that they met the, the proof that they needed to do in terms of everything else, but I still think they were fine. But like, as you said, if it isn't going to change anything for them, why even change it? But and it, 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 it could only if, if Raritan changed their ordinances, we believe. But also, um, but we don't know isn't that. there that it, it might be three to two on the township committee, like Ken's, and we really don't know. I, we know that the mayor last year ignored the letter, and the mayor this year did not. So we don't right. know where there's three other people on the township committee. But I'm, but I'm worried a lot of all options. But, but I can't no, see. But, but the difference, the difference is that our wording put an affirmative requirement on them to go do something mm -hmm. in order to to do resolution compliance. The language that the applicant's attorney is suggesting is the language that we put on pretty much everything that we do, any and all outside agencies. Like, we use that language. And I think that then it would be, I think what, what what's going to end up happening, I mean, whatever, I think what's going to happen is that the code official in Raritan Township is going to come over and yell at them because they're doing something without having approval. But that's that's on them after the fact. I don't think it's, I think it takes well, away the affirmative obligation, which is clear from what well, the applicant's attorney said. Attention. When they've gotten notices, and they're not here saying, don't do that, guys. Don't do it. <laughs> like, they're not here objecting. I, I agree. What does that mean legally? I mean, like, they're, I, and that's a, that's a sort of, is there a legal jeopardy for the borough? I'm sorry, can you hear me? For the borough? Or at all? Like, is there mm -hmm. any legal jeopardy? I'm not sure I understand what you mean by that. Okay. So, so the, we've, 
sorry. That is this was so this was approved on the 23rd of November mm -hmm. last year. There were there were guidelines around that approval <coughs> to go to Rarison Township. Is there any legal jeopardy to, to the borough if the township says no and then the development is stopped? Has there ever been a situation where the township comes and says, mm, we're going to pick out a legal fight in some way, shape, or form? I don't know that code, but. Well, this is actually, it's a unique situation. We haven't even adopted a resolution yet. Okay. And that's because the applicant asked us not to so that they could come and, and have this discussion with the board so we can make that change. And to be quite honest, it. And I think I might have said this at the last meeting. It really doesn't matter to me from a legal standpoint either which way is written. Because in my opinion, I don't even think, and I can't speak for whoever is going to do a resolution compliance on this, but resolution compliance is going to require that the MLUL statutes be complied with, and that is a statutory requirement. So there may not even be work done at the site for a code official to have an issue with because they may not even get to any sort of building permit step. So as long as everybody's clear, including the applicant about that, and I can't be sure of anything, I'm just saying that's but you a can, distinct possibility. That was to my point of why change the word in that. Because we, might, we had a very long discussion about that at the time. We, were, we all know this letter is going to be required from Raritan. We know that we, we, they would have to do that as the ordinances and resolutions, their rules stand with the Raritan, right? We know that. So I'm not sure why it benefits anybody to change the wording, personally. I'm, I'm, can somebody help me understand yeah, let me why? Play, let why? me play out a scenario. Mm -hmm. They could subdivide the property. They could subdivide the property and put everything that's in Flemington in Flemington. It's just an option. I'm not, I'm not suggesting it. I'm not, but however, there is another way to do it but by putting the words in that you must go to Raritan Township on this. Now, they might have to come back to us with a new property or whatever, but the property that's all in Flemington, just like Burger King, like where, where the mayor said, well, do we have a problem in Burger King? Yeah. Yeah, because Burger King should have got Raritan Township approval too, the way that the MLUL stands. So but let me require that. So let me throw this out there. A hybrid of the two is another possibility. So option one, complete the language as is. Option two, general language, which at the end of the day would still require the same proof. Or option three, which is the specific language as required by NJSA blah, 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 the municipal land use law. In which case, and we could even spell it out, if there's a subdivision, whereas that property is no longer subject to an approval by the municipal land use law, then that condition goes away. It's just another way to get at the condition versus saying, you, you, cause even I think that, that was implied, yes. but that it was, was implied, a little more clear. But the, to, 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 um, to the chair's question, that would be the reason why they changed the language to a more general piece, just like anybody else who's in a property that people, it's, it's up to them. It's up to them to get their approvals and their ducks in a row. Whether or not other properties, or we set precedent, right? Because I always understand we don't set precedent, but we haven't done it on other properties that, that are um so again i think the language there are other ways to skin a cat with a more general set of language. Mm -hmm. no i am i and that is true I, that, I, that is absolutely the, true the current resolution is related to the, to the plot what no the, the, the parcel parcel which is not subdivided right now right. so if i can understand if you want to change it to allow for subdivision but then still the then I can understand changing it for that reason. I'm I'm still not convinced on that reducing it. I well, I don't have any any problem if they want to try to get a letter of no interest from the township committee versus the land use the, the zoning board in in or in township. The zoning board, I don't think they can if they if they see it this is they can't approve it because it's not an allowed use in the town at all. So, I mean, it would be like approving strip clubs, you know? That's why I put both in. Right. To be honest, because I didn't want to make that decision as to which entity could provide them with the information. I wanted to leave it up to them as to 
could include. And, and again, to give them the applicants some flexibility. So if I could just, it's not uncommon for a draft of the conditions on the, on the resolution to be, Tara takes, takes everything that we've said at the hearing, looks at all the minutes, comes up with a draft, sends it to whomever, whatever application, sends it to their attorney. And there oftentimes is a back and forth on, oh, actually, I thought we meant this, we meant that. And 99% of the time, that stuff is worked out without the board getting involved at all. And like maybe 10% of the time, as chair, I heard that there was, oh, yeah, it's not coming because they're still working out on some language on yada yada. Because they get copied on an email, they had found this thing as a package. Yeah. Oh, this happens regularly. I think what we're seeing here is that this one, this what's being proposed by the applicant here for this condition Q, I think it is on the resolution, is substantively different enough that Tara felt we needed to that it triggered the these kinds of questions that, that are in the law. And we had to we have a long discussion. How comes it right? It was a long discussion. So I am what I'm saying is that if 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 in in and I know this one's not regular because this was a little cannabis question, but this was just a vanilla application. Like, and an applicant said, and we had generally approved the project, and an applicant said, hey, actually, can we use this language versus that language? And Carol would have signed off on it. We wouldn't even be having this conversation because we tried to make sure that once an approval has been granted, everyone's on board with the language. And then obviously the board's interested in taking care of it, but like, we try to work with an applicant by some approval in order to be able to make resolution compliance happen in a way that lets them go forward because the board has, you know, put an applicant through the time and expense of a hearing and we've done all of our questions and all of our due diligence and if approval has been granted, we try, I think, we try, I should try to like, let's get this thing done so that they can, so we can adopt the resolution, they can wait their 45 days and then they can actually start pulling permits and get something done, right? And I, that's, that's where I'm, I'm coming from. I would have liked Harris language, but I, I I don't care if we go to the other language if if that's going to maybe help this thing move forward. Um, but is it? But that's my question, is it? Though Carol's clearly saying we can't move ahead without that anyway. So what? It, I mean, that risk may be on the applicant. And then we as long as the applicant understands and everyone understands. But then it doesn't help. care, and then why do we care? Let them have what they want. Why do we care? Because right. I'm also well, worried about well, us well, having to to that. I'm worried that we have a condition that's too restrictive, that we know that the applicant can't apply. That does put the board at risk for imposing right. an unreasonable condition. That's uh -huh. that's the legal question that, that, that maybe Adrian was trying to get at. I think that if the applicant's coming up with something that is maybe not what we thought it was going to be, but man, it's gonna end up having the same results because of the state law. Mm -hmm. I'm let them let them yeah. that's where I'm coming at. Like let them do it. And they're gonna have the problem. Right. I wasn't saying that it's being unreasonable, I was saying that it's being realistic because we know the situation between us and the township. Yeah. And then, I, so we, we want to be good neighbours with Raritan too. I know it's been said in this context before. We're going to come across these decisions before. What if Do we, we have to consider how Raritan view what we change this word in? But it's not Raritan, it's five different committee members, right? right. And we know they don't all agree on this topic. So if we change it, some may say great, and others might be, be you know, mm -hmm. I, I, we, you know, we just, I think we need to look at it on what Jeff said, of making sure the our applicant can get through compliance and it's still on them to get it, but at least it gives them a shot at getting and, it because they're not getting it. And, adjustment. and Tara, theoretically, they could, when they go to Raritan Township, whatever entity there, to, there could be a condition that they put on and say, you know what, don't build it. it I believe we're talking about one, two, or three parking spots. Mm -hmm. very, I, yeah, I'm not, right. and part of it is that it, it, it landscape right, gone. Right. So theoretically, they mm -hmm. may say, we don't want that in our, we don't want anything to do with that on our township. Mm -hmm. And then that there are other ways to get there from a, I, I don't know whether it was a subdivision or a. Uh, I, I but, but, but the other the other thing that we're not talking about, and I'm not trying to game out the, the applicant's counsel here, but if they were to go to the Raritan Township zoning board and make application and be denied because of whatever, it is, they could appeal that decision because we are talking about three parking spots and some landscaping, and. 
I mean, the applicant may choose to not go down that road, but again, it's on them to do it, okay. right? Not on us. Yeah. We're not taking away that option from them. Yeah. If they're denied by either the township committee or or by the zoning board, they have a, they have an appeals process. They have they have rights under the NLUL to appeal decisions, um, and it may be that they this becomes the case that we end up citing. And I, you know, we teach them class. You know, right? let, like, let me let me this, draw the thing there for everybody. What about a general condition with a reference to the statute that applies? I mean, does that get us to the exact same? Spot? Does it keep open a reminder that this is an issue? Is that more than anyone's willing to or interested in doing? Again, I'm just trying to throw out. I mean, when we so so we have um, Fort School Road applicant, right? We questioned about DOT access in their opening. Um, would right, we, I don't want to talk about no, I was gonna say when when you do a resolution like that, are you yeah. gonna cite the state, the state and just NJSA for rule from NJAC where it says that they have to go to DOT? I I am just trying to come up with ideas. Well, you know, here's here's funny half the time we do, half the time we don't, right? Oh, really? Because <laughs> no, if there's if like on the side play they're depicting this, uh, a a uh, a driveway opening, we will on um, have absolutely have say. Approval from DOT for the driveway opening is a condition of approval, but we don't necessarily cite chapter. That's first. what I'm right. Yeah. It's about the chapter first, so but, we don't. But like, the we don't necessarily put in like if it's a county road, you need county planning board. You we don't we don't list all of it out. We don't say cons. We yeah we say all Indian all agencies. We don't say soil conservation and yada yada right. yada. yada. Right. And sometimes yeah. we we historically yeah. This is why I love our great discussions we have. We've been very vocal there, but. I, we haven't really gone to anybody on that uh, and the, in, on the board that's on the board. Yes. So, anybody that I haven't seen any hands raised, but then I haven't been looking directly. But so, Hannah, do you have anything you want to raise with us? I mean, ultimately, I don't mind changing the language, but I, again, like it's the same point, though. It, it's still an issue. So, I don't quite. I mean, I get that it's like down the road and like, and if, I, I, it's, I, yeah, this is such an interesting kind of concept because I, you know, I, yeah, I, I don't know. I agree with everyone, um, but I just don't know, like, is it worth to change the language just because it's the same thing? We're going to you know it's like a circle essentially, right? Kind of like a revolving thing. So. Right. I, I, no, I appreciate the discussion, and that's why we do this discussion. Mm -hmm. And um, knowledge, I appreciate that. Um, Jay, just let me go to the members. Who else? Oh, Mr. Hill. Mike and Jim. Mike, Jim, do you have any comments? Um, it's, it's just so minor. Uh, it's just a, a shame that it's you know holding up the plan. But the subdivision that was discussed, was that to take a major piece of the lot and big enough to make a lot out of it for somebody else? Or was it just to carve off the uh, couple of lots and merge it into the property next door? I, 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 I had yeah. to carve off the, the bit of Raritan that in, is in that section, in that parcel. Yeah. What is the size of the parcel in Raritan? Three parking lots. No, the size of the size of the, the, the it's, it's a little bit of lawn and the parking spaces. It was, it's certainly not enough to be a legal lot in okay. No, it's well understood. I was wondering if it could be merged with the lot next to it. Right. Merged yeah. with the lot. Maybe. Yeah, it's uh, uh it's it's something that's going in a circle and not going anywhere uh, based upon what Raritan's doing. Well, that's just a suggestion we're making for uh, to be addressed. We can't address it within this resolution right here, I don't think, right? Um, Mike, Michael, do you have any, Ms. Campion, do you have any comments? Yes. Uh, one, I'm, I'm surprised the zoning board representative from Raritan didn't reach out to the applicant. Very unprofessional. Second, can we hold off on changing any language until the applicants reach out to the 
Township Committee, see what they come back with. Your question for Tom, can I do them? I mean, we can all certainly agree or propose to do whatever. Um, Larry, you've done that already, right? Or did you just go to the zoning board? We've reached out to the township committee. We've 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 already done that, and it, 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 you know, at this point, um, the condition as written, I think, in some of the comments by the board members, I've alluded to this. It gives it really empowers Raritan to to if we were to go to them to to really impose their will or impose impose things in site plan on this property when it really has not when it on this building when it really hasn't really shouldn't really be able to except to to say the use is okay or the use isn't okay if you give this them this affirmative if there's this affirmative obligation to go there they can make whatever they want out of that affirmative obligation if this just goes to more general language then then they're not so empowered we just need to do what we would do in the ordinary course and they can't wave this condition in front of us and say you need to come to us for for uh, a use variance or site plan. They would we would be free to approach them how we wanted. The way it's written now really gives them too much leverage over uh, over um, this site plan, and we don't believe they have it. We understand that they that uh, they have some uh, authority based on uh, the statute or case law to to sign off on the use and that's it. But we don't, you know, we think that this should stay as a, the, 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 we think this should sort of revert to the generic condition that the board has used in the past. We're not really, this resolution is still open. It hasn't been uh, a, a approved. This condition isn't really memorialized yet. It's not, we're not coming here formally requesting a change like um, has been referenced as well. Um, you're free to go, there's a dialogue between the applicant and the board on the, on the language of this condition. And what we're really doing is trying to come up with something that we think is workable. Um, we don't think it's necessarily, you, you have to change what you already did because the condition, the, the resolution hasn't been adopted yet. And, uh, you know, we do think that this condition, that this resolution does need to get adopted. Uh, hopefully, you know, in the very near future, um, but we need to really push this ahead one way or another. Uh, so you, could, you have you have reached out to the zoning board of adjustments and the township committee, and they never responded. We reached out to the Raritan township committee, and they would not give us a letter of no interest. I've got another mini, mini question. Do you need the in, under our ordinance? Do we need all the parking that? It includes the three, three or four lot uh, parking lots that are going to Raritan. And that's one other thing I want to clear up too. There's no portion of what is included in the minor site plan that you approved is in Raritan. The larger track, the larger parcel, the site plan that was approved in the 80s, part of it is in Raritan. But the site plan that you approved, there's no parking spaces, there's no grass, there's nothing in Raritan. I opened up the plan and all 83 parking spaces assigned to that building are fully within the borough. The reverse is true. Some of the Pearl spaces are partially in Flemington. So we actually in Flemington have some of the Pearl spaces. Raritan has none of this building space. And these are assigned by the owner of the, the condo property? It's just the plan says parking area to be used by Canada. This dispensary is 83 spaces and they all are in the borough. All 83 that they are claiming how they can tell us how they got to that, but all 83 are fully within Flemington. There are 18 spaces assigned to the Pearl. Some of those are in Flemington as well. So I think with three within this, no, that, are you saying all 83 they need or all 83 they have? All 83 they have are all in front of them. But I, so what, what, that, what that the overall a, lot is partially, that was so the, the, the we, original hearing. Somebody oh, was wow. claiming Thank you. that some of the cannabis spaces were in Flemington when really none of them were. But, so right. even to get to have right. this parcel be within this parcel there, you know, that's already complete. I'm not, then what do we 
we just took yeah, 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 yeah. parcel is the lot. Parcel is a whole lot. Whole the whole lot. All the way down to Chili's. Right, but no, I know no, that no, individual, an individual parcel They're not. have three spots in Maritime. It is, no, it's not. There's, there's, there's one lot, there's one lot and block, and there's three buildings on. Oh, it is. Uh, uh, one building Pearl. is Pearl, yeah. is in Brainerd, right? There's two blocks. Of lots. Yeah, two blocks. In, in, in this valley, you have a different tax block and lot for that parcel. But one needs a but it is one but one one meets a mail description. It's one property. Sorry, put and it that way. The owner of this complex count out parking spaces and say, this guy's getting this and this guy's getting that, and that's how this, this line was drawn, or was it just? Based on the cannabis numbers, and this is all they needed, and that's how the plan yeah, it's, it's a lease area with 83 spaces. So it's, all, so it's all in the yeah, lease. And all 83 fall in the borough. Yeah. The lease area is completely in the borough. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't, I don't know. I'm like, um, yeah, I get it. I get what you're saying. <laughs> do you understand? Well, I do. We yes. had this yes, issue. We did. So, yeah, oh, the I question is, if it's the least area, it's all within the borough. Just if the least area of Burger King is all within the borough, do we treat it like Burger King? Because we've already set that precedent. And I hate precedents, but it's set. Has anybody, have we seen, or Larry, have you reviewed that resolution for PNC? Okay. I've reviewed the Burger King resolution, yes. Oh, good. There are enough parking on the project to take care of everything that we you need without taking having the spaces that go into Raritan. Yes, we we have eighty three parking spaces. It's well over parked. It's 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 well over parked for everybody. Yeah, it's well and over parked for 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 the blessed cannabis use. And bless does not need any any more than the eighty three parking spaces, and none of those eighty three parking spaces are in Raritan. And they and they wouldn't accept the fact that if we turned that whole area where their parking is in the grass, they would still not turn it down. Or they would they would turn it down. You don't need the parking. Make it uh, make it grass. It's disturbing the pearl building. Right, it would it would disturb the per, the Pearl Building is is the, there and the parking for the Pearl Building is in Raritan, so uh, that needs to stay as is, and we we've not proposed any changes to anything beyond that lease. Uh, so the Pearl lease parking time. is some stuff that's a problem. I hate to say it that way. Right, and the Pearl ever come before, so we'll have to have this whole discussion all again. But can, can I just add the small members of the board that haven't had a chance to say anything? So we've got Dennis. Do you want to say anything? Well, just uh, he, it's not like the building split between Raritan and Flemington. Uh, I think that the whole site plans within Flemington, I support making the language very um, general, and it's yeah. up to them. Yeah, that's it. That's why we have the discussions because it all came out then. Melissa, do you have anything? Um, I think pretty much just to echo everyone else. I feel like we're this is kind of going around in circles. Um, and also to echo Mike, I, you know, it's kind of disappointing that Riordan didn't respond in any form or fashion to the applicant. Kind of, you know, yeah. Said, yeah. So. so it sounds to me like the board is um, minded to change the wording to the different wording that was suggested. And I just also want to make a point for the record that we talked about subdivisions, but it's, we don't need it for this parcel. And then I was, we were, I was no, like, oh, we don't have this up And I just want to make it clear, no, I just want to make it clear here too. This is a unique situation. Mm -hmm. This is a unique statute. It's something that does not have a great deal of legislative guidance. This is a use that is a very controversial in some cases. There's litigation in this borough with regard to this matter. So that is one of the reasons why we're trying to be as clear and um, conservative as possible. If the applicant can get something from Raritan that complies with that general, if we're going to change it that way, fine. If they get a declaratory judgment action from the court saying that that statute in this instance should not be construed that way, whatever it is that they do. But my job to cover this board. 
And I feel like if you're making that determination that it's not required on behalf of the applicant, then that could be an issue. And Tara, are you are you're also asking us if you, there were two underlying questions. One was is it substantive enough that it would have changed our decision, correct? And we that, don't have to do that. Oh, we don't have to do that. We don't have to do we that. Noticed, correct. We noticed, correct. we reopened the public yep. hearing. Yep, the so. applicant didn't want to come make the argument and then to have the board say, well, it is substantive and then have to go back and miss this meeting tonight and miss the notice. So they agreed to- So out of abundance of caution, they noticed. So, so do we need to, A, reopen the public hearing? It, yes, because they so, noticed. So I do want to make sure that there's right. No so I'm just I'm just trying to get a to do list because I'll I I, I I I I will help along with that. And then after the public hearing is open, once we hear uh, public hearing is open, we'll hear comments again from anybody in the public, and and then we'll close the public hearing and then vote on the resolution. Uh, well, we will uh, vote on that condition, condition whether or not the. Board is comfortable with that amended language. If that's the case, I'll put the final version together. There were some other changes that Beth had made, some other comments that council had made. I'll have that all ready for to, to go for the 22nd. Sure. Sure. Well, why not treat it like Burger King? I, for the reasons I indicated before, Mayor, it's my recommendation that we leave it general and we look up to the end. Uh, again, not looking at Burger King, not being here for Burger King. Having that be a completely different type of use, having the situation be entirely different, having there be litigation with this borough with regard to this use at this property, from what I understand, um, that's just my recommendation. So did we de facto reopen the public hearing while we were having this whole discussion? Or do should I make a motion that we reopen the public hearing? No, so no it's not reopen. It's, it's a reopen. It's, it's we, not reopen. They noticed for this. They noticed so it's a public hearing. It is not a reopen. Thank you. That's what I was looking for. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. So, and again, just I'm not trying to make this more difficult. I'm truly, truly not. I just wanted to make sure we've got to. I, ju I just want to make sure. Yep. Belt and braces and belt and I just want to make sure. So, do we now need a motion to open a public hearing it's formally? Is that the one? Just because it's a public no. hearing. It's a public hearing. A motion of, to open the open to the public for comment. Yes. Oh, yes. we have a motion oh, to open that. Exactly. Thank you. We have to vote on that. Yes, and then can we vote on that to reopen uh, uh, open for open for public comment on this issue? Mm -hmm. On this one. Jeff and me. Okay. Okay. Mayor. Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Dashner? Yes. Mayor Carroll? Yeah. Councilwoman Pissarro? Is this only for the people that are eligible yeah, to open the yeah, meetings? They didn't listen to the tape. Listen yep. to the tape. Yes. Okay. 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 So let's focus on those people. Yep. Yeah. Um, Mr. Campion? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Ms. Giffen? Yes. Ms. Weitzman? Yes. No. Jim? Jim? Jim, say yes. Jim, say yes. Reopening public comment. Jim, say yes. Oh, I didn't hear my name. Sorry. Yes. Just around in the public hearing, Jim. You're going to ban you from Zoom, Jim. Oh, open it for public comment. Does anybody in the public have any comments on this issue? Can it be in the room? Exactly. Yeah, from all of this discussion, it's Lois Stewart. Lois Stewart, 26, oh, 32 Emory Avenue, Flemington. After all this discussion, Exactly what am I allowed to comment on? And this time he wants to. <laughs> no, on the, on the specific um, change of well, condition, condition Q of the resolution for Bless Wellness. Which is, which requires how, what kind of, what, it requires what kind of approval they need to receive from our intention. We were very specific in our original language. They're asking for it to be more general. And that's what we're going to discuss. Well, that's what we've been discussing and whether we can do that. Well, I just would encourage you to keep in the forefront of your minds that if you expect to be asked for your response to things by that entity, 
perhaps you want to give them the opportunity for this entity. And I think that somebody mentioned about being neighbors, and I think that's extremely important. I, I believe um, most of the applicant did, did test, uh, was it tested? We don't have to do that. I can't, I lost, I mean, hopefully you still have it. My everything just there. Which one is it? What? Okay. If anybody from the public which is on the second screen oh, has any hands up, has anybody got a hand up as a I don't see any hands up. No, there's, 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 there's only the, the council view and two other people with no hands up. I don't see any hands up. Okay. I don't see any hands up, so see and now. Motion to close the public second. hearing. Second. Can we take a roll call, please, Eileen? Mr. Dasha? Yes. Mayor Carroll? Yes. Mr. Campion? Yes. Ms. Giffen? Yeah. Ms. Weitzman? Yes. Mr. Hill? Yes. Okay. I'm going to move that we adopt the language for condition Q as suggested by the applicants <coughs> and direct Kara to repeat the resolution with that change as well as these other minor changes that she had mentioned so that we can vote on the approval of it. At the meeting next week, the next session. And and so it's fair for the record that language is for condition Q. The applicant shall comply with all applicable borough, county, and state statutes, ordinances, and regulations, including without limitation, obtaining all approvals and or permits. Thank you. Do I have a second for that motion? Yeah. I'll second that. Yeah. Uh, and can we take the roll call to the eligible vote, please? Mr. Basha? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Mayor Carroll? Yes. Mr. Campion? Yes. Ms. Giffen? Yes. Ms. Weitzman? Yes. Good help. Yes. Yeah. Right. Thank you everyone for the discussion. Um, before I move on to the next item, I do want to uh, restate again because I think there are some comments on the online board here. Um, people asking about item 11, public payment from Central Station, MLC. have the we, resolution for Golden Park. No, I'm, I'm just thinking of uh, restating it again um, because there are some comments people sitting waiting. That has been um, tabled until the April 9th. Not, I'm going to say April 9th. No, we moved that to April, April 9th. 9th. April 9th meeting. Um, no further notice will be given. That's for application 2023 05 lot 34 lot 7. For anybody that may be waiting for that, that is not going to happen tonight. It's going to happen on April 9th. No further notice will be given. Thank you. Um, so now we're going to move to <coughs> item 9 resolution Golden Heart Homes LLC application 202308 lot 28 lot 847 Maple Avenue. Are we able to now? Okay, we're going to have more resolutions next time. Awesome, thank you. Um, we already, we changed the agenda, so item 10 was already taken care of. I just made a note about item 11. So we're on item 12, chair item. Um, I accidentally left committees on the agenda. I don't have anything more to say about agenda, uh, committees today. I do want to add in something that I've asked, um, Eileen to do and Cara has, has said, uh, confirmed that we there's no reason we can't do this. What we're going to do is um, currently we have on the website all of the documentation for people to see for the public and all the applications. What we haven't done in the past is added our resolutions to that list of things that are online available for them to see. And because our resolutions contain these very things, these changes, these conditions, conditions thank you. I'm all right. Um, if it contains all the conditions which effectively form part of the contract, with, it's not been available. We've had it, but the public haven't had it. So there's no reason, apparently, I've checked with Cara that we can't do that. And Aline has agreed that we are going to put all the ones where we have currently on the website a link to different projects. All the resolutions related to those that we currently have are going to go onto there and be added on for transparency for the public. The only thing that I'm sure would recommend is that it be the not only the final but the signed one. So yes. that's it's signed, it's dated, signed PDF, all correct. of the reports <coughs> that are attached to it. Yeah, because Eileen pointed out. Go and yes. 
as a, a first point for people to see if they're interested, it contains all the reports that were referenced during the, the public hearing. So then people know where to go look and which one to look for and everything. So hopefully that if anybody's interested in the future, they will have it right there. And it, no reason not to do it there, basically. So that's one thing we're going to change. Um, and the next we only <coughs> tell me I got all the way through. Um, Next meeting is March 2026, regular meeting right now. We have, um, uh, Chick-fil-A, if we get papers, from, if we get submission from them, we have Yeah, I expect it at any moment they ask that uh, the number of steps to be submitted. Right. Um, we have the resolution for Golden Heart Homes. We have the review of the redevelopment plan for Liberty Village. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, the um, public hearing for Chick-fil-A, depending on uh, submission of new plans. We do have, we carried the public hearing to for Wurtsville Road Properties. We should probably keep that on the agenda and then make the announcement because anybody that is from the public was, was you know, made aware that that would be continued to the 26th. We would have to then make that. And they are moving to May 14th. May 14th, May 14th will they, be they probably they requested that today. And then we still have, have and they extended the time to, to oh, and, well, and we have the public yeah. hearing for T, 120 house elements. We have two public hearings that are currently for sure. Okay. So Chick fil A did it. Right. Yeah. Yes. That's how um, it did sound like they had the plans uh, prepared. Um, they asked. Um, and they were hopefully, I'm hoping today or tomorrow. Or tomorrow. When is that deadline? Well, 10 days would be Friday. That does not give them a lot of time to yeah. review or that day. Mm -hmm. they brief. Sorry. Folks, can I jump in? Uh, I need to leave where I'm at. And I, I feel like we're wrapping up the meeting pretty soon. So I'm going to jump unless folks, unless you want to give me a couple of minutes, I can call back in. No, I think you're right. I don't think we've got anything substantive left unless somebody has a chair item they want to add in. But thank I, you. I, I just want to talk about the completeness checklist for one second to put something on Kara's radar that, that when they do that checklist, that it includes before an applicant comes before us that their taxes are paid, taxes in water. And sewer are paid in full. And no yeah. taxes are, that's a statutory requirement. It water is. And sewer. Yeah, actually, but utilities are, are also required. But, then, but I've been told that nobody checks with Bill Hans as to whether or not the taxes are paid. So they check with Rebecca. Okay. I do get um, Let's say certification. Check. <laughs> I know, but we have we run our own sewer Perfect. and water department, and most have Yeah, she does department. check the utilities as well. <clears throat> so Let's just make put it on the checklist because it's not a, a clerical item. Mm -hmm. It is a, a town item. Maybe we can add some other proof that it happened into the checklist that that could be a specific. It will. Like it the taxes are done. Discussed. Water and sewer will do, and Bob will look at that once it, whatever's on that checklist, even if it's not something Bob would technically review. So if it's not there, mm -hmm. they'll indicate it's not there. Right. So we'll have a check and balance that okay. way. Um, but we'll put water and sewer on it. I think the kind of things that all of us will be thinking about that we're not going to add in when discussion comes up when Bob brings that to us. Um, anybody else have anything they want to raise at this moment? Other than this, it's fine. Um, I think Aaron. Um, item 13. Um, they came out very pretty late. You may oh. have been already in the debate. I saw that. I'm sorry, Dennis. Dennis is going to say. Oh, that, Dennis. Aaron. Uh, yeah, I, I just want to bring up, with all due respect to everyone on the board, I'm really concerned that we're not going to have council comments. Um, you know, I think as a class three member, um, that person is appointed by the council, and I don't understand why we wouldn't have mayor comments as well as council comments. I'm a liaison to the HPC. I don't tell people you can just watch the HPC meeting. I think it's important to just get the feedback from the council member. And I re I respectfully ask, you know, uh, Chairwoman, that you keep it on the agenda. I think it's important. Thanks. I'm an elected official. 
So we can keep it. I understand that. I understand that. On the board, however, the board reports to the elected officials, the council, not the other way. And it's a change in culture. It's not true. The planning board has its own statutory authority under that's, state that's, law. Uh, that's wonderful. You know, oh, I'm just saying, I'm very disappointed. I don't understand it, and I'm very disappointed. It's my opinion. That is, we well, at least have the opportunity, like we said earlier. Um, well, let me speak to that. What if, what if Mayor Carroll and I, or it might be Mayor Carroll, because we're in the same meeting. So last night, here's what we talked about. Women's History Month, very long resolution very long resolution and the budget. Hear that on comments tonight. We're discussing joint budget. Uh no. The planning board was brought up by a former planning board member asking if there was why there was a cut to that budget. And the answer was the chair identified that money hadn't been spent for years because it was supposed to be spent in escrow. But our budget but I mean something as simple as our budget was approved or it was not it has the budget hasn't even been introduced. Oh, okay. I, I wouldn't know that. Yeah. Because I don't go to the council meetings for, for and the reason I don't personally as a resident go to council meetings is I voted people in to go to council meetings. And the respect of this board to ask, there was a time, and again I'm gonna sound like a dinosaur, but we had a board of adjustment that did not talk to the planning board, that did not talk to council, and it was vindictive and adversarial. Anything the council wanted, the planning board made sure that they wouldn't get. Anything the planning board wanted, the, uh, the board of adjustment made sure they wouldn't get. And it's just very simple. It just it did. And and we put in things like let's just share not everything. We don't have to download the meeting. It's more of hey guys, this is coming down the pipe. Just like when the mayor says, you'd be surprised when you say, hey, you're going to see Liberty Village on such and such a date. I see people ready to go. All right, such such I'm going to look for it. Not to say that you wouldn't look for it anyway. Not say, it just it adds some level of somebody. You know, when we looked through for 20 years on how to make things more efficient in town, it was the three governing bodies: the council, the planning board, that for planning board, board of adjustment, and the FCP. If we were all in lockstep, we can get things done. If we if we're not in lockstep, then I don't know what we're all doing. I want to be very clear about this. this is the councilwoman's prerogative that she feels that she doesn't need to make reports. The state statute on a council member appointment to the planning board is very clear. It's one or two sentences. It says the council members shall appoint among themselves one of their own to be a member, period. It doesn't say liaison. It doesn't say anything other than that. So, you know, this is her prerogative. She doesn't want to do it. She wants to do it. It's fine. Nobody's making her. Nobody's twisting her arm. Nobody said, don't do it. It's her prerogative on the direction she wants to go. I bring things to you guys. I can't even count on two hands how many times last year the former council representative or council member said, I was going to say that, but the mayor stole my thunder. I don't steal anybody's thunder. I'm the mayor. So, um, you know, I, I'm i sorry if some of you feel that she, She's letting you down, but she is an elected official who is a member of this board and she has chosen how she wants to represent the council. Can I ask a question of both of the elected officials at this point? Um, I'm frankly surprised that all of you think this is such a big deal, honestly, because I served in the rare township plan for years and the council appointment, the committee appointment, never ever had a report, only the mayor. And I served like watching planning boards all over the Mental Commission. I never saw a planning board representative. From the from the a governing body ever have a report either only in Bloomington. So, or I can just so say, my question, my question is so we're going to ask a question because I'm hearing board members have consternation about it. They feel like something is trying to be not not communicated as effectively. But when I when I heard what you were saying, I was just think thought you were suggesting that to the mayor's point that the council woman last year did often say, well, the mayor already raised everything I said. Do we need it's the suggestion that if we take the mayor comments and council comments and there's and one of them wants to go away, the implication I feel from people's consternation is that they're not going to hear everything they need to hear from the council. And I, I didn't hear that from it. I I heard that between the mayor would give us 
everything we needed to know about that. And the suggestion that if the council person doesn't give a report, we wouldn't get everything we need to know, is that's, I think, why the elected officials are upset by us, uh, the comments we've been made. So, yes, and I'm, and I'm from having listened to the meetings in the prior year, or even last year. Uh, the mayor isn't stealing the thunder, but the mayor and I do speak. And uh, we, we are both on DPW and we're both on council. Nothing I said tonight was different than what you were going to say. Right. But given that our so form I, of government is a mayor plus council, right? Mm -hmm. It's not like where it's contentious where the mayor was drawn from the council. Would it, would it make everyone more comfortable if we, for instance, had I, blended items two and three and called it mayor and council comments? Come from both of them. Be no, no. Just, I'm just wondering if that would resolve any concerns. Well, we can keep it out. That's what I'm going to probably say, and I'm going to be really clear. If it's the exact same comment as Mayor Caro, that's what I'm going to say. You don't need to say it. I think you wouldn't need to say it. Well, that's, I think that's to her point, is what she said at the beginning. That was the implication I, I got from the, the, the reports. Were, the implication of having two is that the reports would be different. And there may have been when there was contentious between council and mayor, I guess, to your point, Todd, in the past. I don't know. I wasn't. It, it, it wasn't just that. It was, um, more, it was more of as a board. Um, you know, again, I've been here for 20 years. I, it's really hard to understand everything that's going on and really easy to put things in layperson speak. Not a regurgitation of any meeting, but saying things like, hey, guys, we discussed that project X. You're going to see it. You don't need to ask about it. Nobody's keeping anything from you. We discussed this, not even in an executive session, which is this was discussed last night. You can go on and see it yourself. But again, that's why if it is, it ain't your problem, right? But, but now I feel compelled to watch the council meeting to understand if anything that has to do with my role on the planning board is discussed. The then I, I think the answer is then it stays on the agenda. And if the councilwoman has anything she wants to add, and while you're talking about this, Todd, I'm thinking, wow, I should have told all of you that the artist committee, which came out of the suggestion from the master plan, actually had their first meeting. Well, so that's and great. I didn't even think about yeah. bringing that up. Um, and uh, and they met, and uh, Hannah was there, and Hannah and everybody else turned out being chair. And Beth ran the meeting, and uh, Tony Parker agreed to be chair because nobody else would agree. And I don't even know they set another meeting. I don't know when to start working on some bylaws. Some bylaws yeah, happen. yeah. Well, it was just to, to again to begin the checklist, like making our own checklist, like going over that stuff. And then yeah, Beth was there, and she was gracious enough to help us with all that to say that she would help us with the bylaws and getting all that up around and getting giving us an example from other townships that she's worked with um and yeah and it was for march 19th that we're going to have another meeting so i can check back in um or check in with you also um karen no, to see no. if you want to add something or not yeah the councilwoman knew nothing about that meeting so she couldn't even kick me under the table and say talk to the arts committee had it could have done that you could have kicked me under the table mm -hmm. okay, that, but... oh yeah yeah yeah. I was gonna maybe say something at the end, but it's work. We're all because we we still like we're we haven't really established anything other than we exactly what you just said that we've had our first meeting and we're we're working on it still. Nothing's really set yet, but we are working on it right now. Yeah. And I do think that there's nothing that applies to the planning board by all means. You know, no comment. You know, no comment. You know, that's what, that's what, yeah, right. Not to keep it to the. I'm just thinking to myself that like it's up to the individual to seek out the information. I mean, that for for. Councilwoman Prasaro to to say something, and or even the mayor herself. I mean, it, it's I'm here for the planning board, so just leave it. Right. Just don't, you know, you know, just think about it. I mean, I'm not. I'm not it may be shame it. on me. I mean, a lot of the council members, I, on council nights and the reports, talk about the ribbon cuttings they went to and how many photo yeah. walks they went to. I never do that. I don't even I never do that because I don't. Yeah. You know, that's my job. <laughs> I don't think it's my job to report it, to go to ribbon cuttings. And DPW, I want to see the information. Yes, see the information. That's, that's all I'm, I'm trying to draw the logic to. So right. I don't think there's a transparency or a communication or, you know, one one against the other. It's public information. Look for it. That's how I'm, I'm, that's what I do. <laughs> I'm on the website. That's how I do it. 
I watch every video, but it's always after the fact. And, you know, they're not on yet from yet last night. They're not on. They'll be on probably tomorrow. So I watch everyone because I always like to know what's going on. They're very helpful. But yeah, I couldn't wouldn't even know what happened last night. So that's why it's always interesting. It's not about transparency to me. It's just, you know, if someone has another comment about something. Yes, I think council had a concurrence um, to the budget with a 2.5% increase because it's continuing to try to get the debt under control. And it will be introduced on March 25th. March 25th. So uh, that's, that's the bottom line. It's still Thank you. I think it's useful to have this discussion. People have got their thoughts about it out there. Let's um, leave the agenda as it is right now. Um, and let's see moving forward how, what, how you want to, uh, what comments you want to make. Um, thank you, everybody, for your comments. Appreciate that. It's always good to have a good discussion. Um, but wait, we, now we need to do item 13, which is the bill we did. I made a motion already. We do have a motion. Yeah, we have a second. Floor. And we have a second. So can you call the roll for order to the bills, please? Sure. Uh, Mr. Dobson? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Mayor Carroll? Yes. Council Warner Pissarro? Yes. Mr. Campion? Abstain. Ms. Giffen? I don't know if I didn't see them. <laughs> they did come out late. But they were they came out. Sure. Mr. Hill? Yes. Ms. Weitzman? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Thank you. All right. Um, I can 14. Do we have any executive session? No. Excellent. Then do I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? All in favor? Uh -huh. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you. Dennis, I hope you had cold drinks while you were watching the show. Didn't they? I missed you. What did you say, Jim? I hope Dennis had plenty of cold drinks while he was watching the uh, uh, committee show. Oh. Take care. All right. Thank you, everyone. Do I have to press end here, right? Uh, yeah. Anyone else is reporting to go on?